Hello, 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 and welcome to the Linux Lads. Um, as always, I'm Shane. I'm Connor. And I'm Mike. And we are the Linux Lads. Uh, we have a nice action-packed episode for you today, talking about Linux. Uh, <laughs> and um, first up, just let's get the boring bit out of the way. Um, we have a coupon code for 30% off when you pay for three months of Azure VPN. It's a security-focused VPN provider based in Sweden. The law there doesn't require them to log traffic, so they don't do it. Um, they operate operate five servers in, or they operate, <laughs> they operate five servers, hopefully more than that. They operate servers in five locations in Europe and North America. Uh, they install all their own hardware, so uh, they actually walk it to the site and install it themselves. They provide a WireGuard option, OpenVPN, and their client is GPL version 2, and of course it's available on Linux. They take payment in all of the cryptos, all of the caches, all of the credit cards, and you don't even have to give them your email address, which is very nice. Um, use the code LinuxLads when you're ordering. Um, make sure you click the green add code button so it applies to your order. Um, that will get you 30% off the f three months, and that's valid until the 1st of the 1st, 2020. So, without further ado, um, I will interrogate you, Sir Mike, for some news for us. I believe there's been some brouhaha with uh, Matrix, isn't that correct? Yeah, so Matrix got hacked uh, as we're recording today, I think, and um, according to ZDNet, uh, pretty much uh, all the unencrypted conversations are lost. Uh, the encrypt, sorry, unencrypted conversations were accessed, encrypted conversations were lost, and uh, they are redoing everything. People should, if you have an account on Matrix dot org you should probably you know change your passwords around and do the usual post post breach hygiene um let me maybe backpedal a little bit because uh, matrix.org is obvious is of course the uh, service f that uh, provides uh, provides matrix hosting matrix is a chat platform uh, and much more a bit like slack or telegram so uh yeah these people unfortunately have been become victims of cyber, of a cyber attack and uh everybody who has got an account there should probably take some action yeah as i understand it um no user data was lost um that's that's what i read so they say that unencrypted content including private messages password hashes and access tokens may have been compromised uh so everybody got locked out uh, by by action of the of the host and uh, they can't now probably people can't uh, access some or all of their conversations if they weren't backed up so yeah there might be there might be a loss obviously like for people who who you who who do the same thing and don't reuse their passwords this should be localized to just the matrix stuff and if the conversations were encrypted because matrix does provide that option then uh those that encryption encryption as far as we know wasn't broken so whatever secrets people were sharing they might not be able to see them again the messages but uh, no one else should be able to access them either yeah, well, you have to give it to them for being so uh, forthright about it. I mean, it, it seems like as soon as it happened, they were straight on top of it, letting people know. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm looking to the the Twitter feed here. It seems to be they're very proactive. They're responding to every everyone. There's a myriad of updates in relation to it. Uh, in relation to it so they are um, constantly updating people, which is exactly what you should do if there's any kind of breach um however minor or major um we don't know the details of how minor rate or major it is but certainly the what they reacted the way uh, the way they should which is release a statement and then uh, as if people um respond to them or ask them questions be very diligent in um responding to people's concerns in relation to it so uh, kudos to them um for reacting so quickly yeah, I agree. Um, next up, we've got a uh, Microsoft Edge may come to Linux eventually, just not right now. Um, I I personally can't wait. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on I the mean, edge of my fucking seat. 
<laughs> wow, let's see what you did there. Whoa. But, well, to be honest, if they released this uh, information uh, two months ago, I'd be like, okay, well, that's interesting. We need more choice. But because they are swapping from uh, the whatever the Edge HTML or whatever they call the rendering engine, they are they are going to change it to to Chromium based. Uh, uh, basically, basically like almost everything else, Edge is going to become a Chromium based browser. So I just can't fucking even care about this anymore because there's just so many browsers and every single one of them has got the same rendering engine based on what Google decides. Uh, the standards are the only stalwart is Mozilla's Firefox, which is using something else. Every, I mean, every other major browser is based on Chromium, so I don't think it makes any difference. Is unless Edge has got some killer feature that I'm not aware of that uh, that would make it worth. Then I think, yeah, it's more choice, but it's not really choice because everything's the same. I'm going to do a slight devil's advocate to that um, argument um, there, Mike, of the whole thing of um, Microsoft are a big player and they're as big a player uh, as Google in terms of uh, a, a software development house. Um, so they might might take the common base and 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 bring it in a new direction or it might be the case of rather than uh, uh, the Chromium um, Blink um, rendering engine doing everything going in the direction that Google wanted to go in because Google are the only people developing it because it's uh, it's open source and there's another now and uh, a new uh, player has entered the game essentially. Um, so I think it it could possibly be. I don't know if it is going to be this way, but it could possibly be that. It, um blink will become far more neutral now than um if it was just one major software development house which is google um developing f uh the blink engine now that microsoft has entered in it could bring it back towards this the more of a neutral ground um somebody on twitter i i don't uh, have the link off the top of my head um if i can find it it will be in the show notes uh, somebody on twitter released a, a a screenshot of a list of all the things that apparently microsoft removed from chromium in order to make their version of it and a shitload of google name was was in all, on that list in other words uh, google cloud sync google um their their the Google Print, their print server and stuff like that, all of those stuff was apparently embedded into Chromium and Microsoft just went in and went, not that, not that, not that, not that. <laughs> um, so it to do a devil's advocate of that argument, um, I could see that another player entering in the game, which is a player that's as big as Microsoft, could make it more neutral. Uh, having said that, I do agree with the point of now everyone is just developing on the one uh, rendering engine, which would which means that uh, software or not just uh, web developers, not just software developers, web developers will be targeting one because that will be ninety percent of the market rather than the ten percent of the market, which will be all the other rendering engines such as um, uh, Mozilla's Gecko and so on and so forth. But if in a way, it's good if we, if it is the case of the 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 web developers are only targeting one target. It's good that you have more than one big player developing for that re uh, rendering engine. It kind of neutral, uh, uh, neutralizes it in a way. It makes it more um, neutral, essentially. Um, does my devil's advocate reaction? No, I, I, I acknowledge that point. I see it, as you said, it makes sense. If there has to be only one, it's good that the power field is slightly level, that we don't have one massive Google against everybody else, but that there is another behemoth in there. 
but uh, I am a bit worried about uh, about web standards uh, getting skewed and uh, the big boys just playing a game that nobody else can participate in. Plus, there's a problem with vulnerabilities that uh, if there's something that's affecting Blink, then now it's got like 90% of browsers are affected. So that's, yeah, I, I and just to take it back to the news that uh, this might be coming to Linux, I would more appreciate if Microsoft uh, ported some other stuff to Linux, like at least some version of Excel, uh, you know, or did, did a bit more work for the desktop. I know I understand they are not pressured uh, and that it might not make any economical sense, but Microsoft Edge is the last thing I'd like to see from, from, that, from that universe coming to ours. Yeah, yeah, good points, good points. Um, on the lighter side, uh, we have uh, Linus is at it again. Um, he he loves saying negative things and slagging shit off and just all around being a bit of a grump, and we love him for it. Um, he is now saying that social media is a disease. Um, sounds a little bit harsh, but very much in keeping with his his characteristic tone. Um, he likes to he likes to lay into things and people as we know um i have a hard time disagreeing with him but perhaps i wouldn't use the same language and maybe not like social media in its current form yes i think it's not fantastic but uh but yeah yeah you know it's um saying it's a disease i mean it has its place in in, in the world but but yeah what do you guys think about that yeah, I don't know if it's social media or if it's just people because it's it is definite. I mean, actually, coming to think about, no, he's fucking right. Of course, he's right. Uh, <laughs> you know, you there know, it is. Not, There's Mike. <laughs> hold on a second. You know, uh, dear listeners, you should know that this is Friday afternoon, and I'm well tired after a long day at work. So that's why my brain is a bit too slow to start, but it's kicking in and. It's not just the people who are on Facebook that make it so shit. It's Facebook trying to squeeze everybody for the la last drop of anger because they know that if there's some, some drama, the people will come back and participate and then will sell their details for nothing and then Facebook can go to Big Pharma and sell pictures of our dicks to whatever they are onto, right? So, yeah, of course he's right. Uh, unregulated social media are a curse of modern times and uh, we, you know it's not that people are such bastards people can get angry and say something but facebook amplifies it and twitter and reddit i mean uh, look at the idiot at the, in the white house if facebook was regulated uh oh, sorry if twitter because this is this is twitter right uh, so if twitter was uh, it's all, all of them anyway no i mean i mean donald trump anyway if Twitter was regulated, or not even just... I'm not saying that they should curb his speech, but there should be something that would say, well, this thing that he said is not true, you know, when he says uh, that uh, there is no space in this country, we are full, we are full. You know, when he says that on Twitter, there should be a fact-checking somewhere, some, some kind of a mechanism that says, no, that's bullshit, mate. Okay, so, so I think that Linux is 100% right. Social media are disgusting, not because of their potential of what they could be. They could be extremely useful, but because the companies are really targeting people's emotions uh, to do what I'm just doing here, basically renting, and they are squeezing it for drama and uh, making it making it into sell. Uh, one, one small point I'll just say to, to wrap that up is probably... Um, we should all go over to the Fediverse. So, <laughs> not the not the idea of uh, social media as as a concept. I object to. It's just I think the those big uh, companies, the Facebook, the Instagrams, the Twitters, and so on, they're they have far too much power. Um, certainly, there's uh, there's an argument to be said about sharing your photographs of of your holiday and people reacting to that and said oh that's a nice uh photograph um it looked like you're you got a nice suntan there on your summer holiday or whatever Th that's all that's a human nature we're sharing memories we're sharing things it's just people exploiting that such as uh, facebook and twitter and, and instagram and everything like that and uh, so i think 
um, heavily encourage people in the listening to this all go over to the Fediverse. It's it's nice <laughs> over here. God, I should have fucking known better than to bring up social media around you two. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, let's see now. Um, Red Hat and Fedora devs are ramping up ARM support. This sounds very nice. Um, this is from Oh My God Ubuntu or OMG Ubuntu, whatever you want to say. Um, yeah, this, uh, I mean, it is what it says on the tin, I guess, but it, but that's that, that's very good news. I mean, the more ARM support, the better, as far as I'm concerned. What do you guys, what do you guys think about that? Um, the idea, I welcome the idea of uh, ARM um, as a platform and the fact that there's more desktop um, class operating systems such as the Linux desktop with the Red Hat and Fedora. Uh, there's Ubuntu versions for ARM. There's um, Arch versions for ARM. Um, whatever Debian, whatever your flavor of of uh, or distribution of choice for Linux, there. Uh, there's in, uh, you have there's increasingly more and more support for for ARM, so um, and also the fact that um, um, in the article they do mention a lot of uh the w- Windows Ten ARM build, that's because uh, Snapdragon or um Qualcomm with their Snapdragon uh, um system on a chip seems to be uh, in close talks with Microsoft about maybe Windows are certainly considering, um, Microsoft with Windows are certainly considering it as a platform, um, kind of hedging their bets rather than relying on x86 as much. But because of the, um, of that increased support and maybe the market share of ARM laptops might increase, which would then... Um, allow these Linux distributions to be ported over as uh, it's kind of a more targeted platform. I know that ARM is more um, fragmented than x86. x86 is just a, a single target you could just target but maybe this could be something that um, could be a single target for developers the Snapdragon um, snap, uh, system on a chip. Mike you you had some thoughts on that? I have good faith in uh, people like Postmarket or West who are trying to unify this fragmentation and create an operating system that would run on most things, on most ARM chips. That's one thing. And the other one is, this is so bloody needed because uh, a lot of people are, uh, at least I think, judging by judging by the sales of, uh, like, or not, not even, the, I don't have the sales, I'll start again. So judging by the success of, of things like the Galaxy Note 9 and the fact that there's a lot of massive giant phones and also the fact that uh, people or companies are now creating uh, big uh, phones that open up into tablets practically and that uh, also that there's a lot of effort put into Android desktop mode and into convergence. I think this is where the market is headed. And obviously, judging by what I just said, it's not just me thinking it. So it might be that, at least for some people, the tablet interface is uh, is good, something that they can carry around with them, use it as a tablet, and uh, clip a keyboard to it and uh, have it as a laptop. Uh, the the ARM processor obviously will mean that this is gonna be this is gonna be uh, more power efficient, so the battery is going to last longer, and with uh, with uh, with more choices like as you say Windows and Linux, uh, more people are going to be able to use it because Android is not for everybody, and so far it has been. Or Android and iOS have been the only choices in this kind of a market. If you don't count count a few uh, like previous attempts by Windows, but uh, if, yeah, as to to make some sense of what I'm saying, basically, I can't wait. Also, any uh, Arch uh, sixty four uh, the Ar- Ar- Arch infrastructure uh, the ARM architecture for the 64-bit one any improvement in that is going to make my uh, pine book work better so everything is uh, everything is uh, welcome so next up we have uh, the the ub ports foundation is uh, ready for launch um 
I don't know much about UB ports personally, so I'm going to hand this one over to you guys because I, I know you've spoken about it before. Um, I'll start with you, Connor. Uh, my me immediate reaction to this is that it's a very good idea. Uh, the UB ports um, seem to be quietly uh, chipping away with um, porting Ubuntu Touch over to various different devices. Um, becoming a foundation puts more of a structure around it, means that fundraising will be easier if they want to do community-sponsored events, if they want to do conferences or anything like that. It just it puts more of a structure around it, um, becoming a foundation. And I think they did it um, in a in a jurisdiction that's not necessarily the easiest one to do, but would probably um, work to their... Uh, in their favour in the long run because um, it means it will probably be more secure that they they probably had to jump through a lot of hoops uh, more hoops in the first place but now that they've jumped through those hoops it'll probably be a more secure base um, I think they they became um, a foundation in Germany um, uh, I can only see this as a good thing and I wish them all the best in the, in the future and going forward because um uh, Ubuntu Touch does seem like a com very compelling um, mobile phone operating system. Yeah, definitely. More power to them. Uh, this is uh, something, obviously, that Canonical uh, stopped developing when they refocused the company. And uh, the community picked it up, created uh, and kept on going with this uh, Linux for mobile phones operating system. And it's only going from strength to strength, uh, in, and it's an amazing example of what uh, com the community and open source can do. So, yeah, I just can't wait for m more news from them, and I can see them achieving great things. Um, just a very brief um, callback to a previous Linux Lads episode. The um, rumoured um, Pine phone, which uh, will be released at some stage in the future um, from um, we had Lucas on a couple of episodes ago by default that will be running Ubuntu Touch so um, power to these uh, Ubi ports guys so next up uh, Zoran OS is closing in on a new release um, personally I've heard some great things about Zoran OS and uh, it's, it's based here in Ireland where we live um, <laughs> I, I haven't actually used it, but from the screenshots, I've always thought it was it was quite nice looking and seemed like a fairly solid OS. Um, have you guys ever used it? I have used it in in a virtual machine. I've not had to use it on um, on kind of raw hardware. Um, it it is a very simple experience out of the box, which will appeal to a lot of people. Um, it, by default, it has a very uh, Windows 7 like layout and there is a, a good thing about Zorn OS is they do have a desktop layout switcher so if you want something that looks more XP like if you want something that looks more um, Mac OS like or even emulating some of um, other um, Linux distributions I think they have, might have a Unity like layout and and so on and so forth um, so the their whole philosophy behind Zorn is it's simple it works uh stick this in front of a brand new convert from windows and they'll feel feel at home um and they they're quietly chipping away at that and i think they're in talks with various different um governments and um like city states and so on and so forth um to say kind of would you be able to roll this out on your infrastructure so uh, some very good news about um, Zorn OS here. Mike, uh, what about yourself? Have you ever used it? Uh, I have uh, tried it, I think, as well on in, virt in a virtual machine. Uh, to me, I don't, I'm not a big fan uh, of this uh, window-esque uh, layout, but obviously I don't remember if it's always been there or, and they just revamped it or if, they, if this is brand new. But they has got uh, what what they called a touch layout, which which gives you a really nice, uh, a really nice full screen launcher with uh, uh, with search. So that might uh, that might be a bit more uh, suited for people like me. 
I appreciate that there are uh, that uh, this exists. It there's obviously a lot of thought going into the design to make it uh, navigable for people who might not have much experience with Linux, and that's always a good thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean there is this is the thing about Linux. There's something in it for everyone. So uh, if if they are if they are uh, you know and the fact that they are closing in on 10 years of releasing a distro which by the way uh, they have got a commercial product out of it as well that's that's amazing you know that's uh, that's again all power to them yeah i always have to admire those type of os's that just do, they they don't try and you know, work paint themselves into a corner. From from what I see, Zorin is very much spoken of as uh, as a as a great all rounder, um, and I think that's very important because we're we're gonna see, you know, that I I, sim I sometimes think there's there's a there's a lot of specialization in the whole in the Linux world and you know distros for a specific type of person or use case or blah blah blah, but um, it's nice to see some solid, reliable all rounders on the field, you know. And a, another one that I notice here in the um, Zorn um, blog post is they, they have a Zorn Connect and which seems to be kind of taking from a bit of from the, the KDE Connect and also the GS Connect projects and kind of making their basing on both of those and kind of making their own version of it, which is, I suppose, is, is good for um, maybe a non-technical user. Um, they might not be aware of the KDE Connect um, or GS Connect um, applications, which are available in in, in the Android App Store. Um and the, just seeing a familiar name, which so oh, I'll use Zorn OS on my op, on my as my main operating system on my laptop or desktop or whatever. Oh, there there's this thing in in the Google um Android store that says Zorn on it. I'm 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 I'll check that out and then find out that oh wait, I can sync my text messages and and so on between my phone and my computer. So it's that kind of cross branding. I think is good for especially for non technical users. Yeah, yeah, good point, good point. Um, so without further ado, uh, I think we've newsed the shit out of everyone. So uh, <laughs> we'll move on to our. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. These segues are very difficult. Uh, <laughs> um, I will move on to uh, the thing we're going to talk about today for for quite some time. I hope. Um, how do we get people into Linux, or you know, muggles as I call them? Um. So how you know how do we how do you sell it to people how do you uh, how do you speak about Linux to people to try and get them using it um I'll j just briefly start with my own little story of how I got someone into Linux uh, I think I've talked about this before but I actually uh, my mother had this crappy ass laptop this like display model laptop from PC World or some shit like it was awful and um, th you know the fan went 19 miles per hour it was a touchscreen laptop. <clears throat> had Windows 7 on it for some reason and uh, yeah it was just a piece of shit so I put Linux Mint 17 I think it was at the time on it and uh, fan didn't make a sound touchscreen worked out of the box uh, it just was fantastic and I didn't really even have to show her how to use it she kind of just figured it out as she went along and she was able to open a web browser do whatever she needed to do um, What a, so uh, I'll, I'll start with you Mike um, what do you think about this? Like, how how do we get people into it? How do we how do we con you know convert the the dirty heathens who who still use Mac and Windows? Well, I am personally not very big on like convincing people. So there is a school of thought that says that you should basically overrun people with your good ideas and uh, make them see what you see. And I don't believe that a single bit. So for me, I am um, I I. If if I if I see that somebody is struggling with a current, if with their current operating system, with like non Linux, whatever it is, I will not try to immediately jump in there and just say, "Well, if you were using Linux, this would be much better," because that is unhelpful and counterproductive, especially if you are talking about a person 
who is already yeah, stressed because yeah. because something is not working. But uh, on the other hand, like if I'm doing something and there's other people around, then I do like to show off the best bits about Linux. You know the uh, what what I what I'm good at using and what I think what makes it good for me. So and what I think could be helpful to them. So definitely. I would call it non-aggressive, non-violent, non-violent, and understanding. Uh, like you have to, you have to understand where the other person is coming from. Say, like unlike Linux and the Mac and Android and iOS, which are very, at least that's my opinion. They are very much one size fits all. Obviously, if Androids there's forks, but you cannot customize them. There is not that much choice. There is one Mac OS environment for everybody right so unlike that in linux there are many choices and we can take more uh, human and uh, personal approach to 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 understand what the user wants and we can uh, show them and guide them to what linux can offer them unlike if we were trying to sell a a hypothetical operating system that just has one option for everybody. This is Linux's biggest weakness. People, some people say, is fragmentation, but I see it as a massive strength because the amount of choice means that we can just showcase it to people and see how it can be tailored to their needs. Yeah, yeah. Like when I was telling that story, obviously I meant that um, I, I want to install Linux on a laptop if someone wants me to. I'm not going to snatch the laptop out of their hands and say come here you fucker i'm gonna put linux on this thing <laughs> <laughs> no i sorry i wasn't i wasn't digging into you that was no not a reaction to that at all that was just uh something i thought before even we started recording about and i thought that's my that is my biggest way of um showing linux because i don't you know, some people like to proselytize or whatever, and I don't. I yeah, don't. I know what you mean. You know, preach. I I don't think that's necessary. Yeah, Connor. Um, have have you ever had any experiences of like uh, trying to convince people about Linux or you know telling them, you know, be useful for them, anything like that? Um. Well, the probably the only experience I have is, um, it was a, a family member of. Um, he was aware that kind of tangentially aware of I've been kind of tinkering uh, with Linux in the past um, not for any professional sense but just generally in the in the past um, he's he's from um, he lives down in Cork so he was completely unaware of our our local meetups um, so he wasn't from that point of view and he he uh, said Oh, uh, I kind of I have this old uh, XP laptop, and I was thinking about this putting this Linux thing that you you've been on about, and he literally uh, sent me a text message saying, "Oh, uh, would you have time to chat, and would you um would have any recommendations or any advice in relation to it?" And so we literally literally had uh, an hour, two hour long conversation, um, and I eventually settled down on. <clears throat> Uh, Zubuntu, I think, was the one that we uh, settled down on, and and once he installed that on his laptop, and the the next update a couple of weeks later was uh, when next I was talking to him, um, uh, was oh how's that going? Oh yeah, that's that's been brilliant. In fact, so much so that I've been thinking about putting it on my uh, desktop computer, and uh, I put it on my desktop computer, but it didn't detect the the wireless card. He he had a, a plug in USB wireless card, and I so then. I was able to advise him further and say, yeah, don't expect uh, all wireless, uh, external wireless cards to work out of the box. And I was able to give him advice of maybe try this one on Amazon or whatever, and maybe that one might be able to work for you. But I just uh, liked the initiative of he was just saying, oh, I've heard of this Linux thing. Connor, you've mentioned this Linux thing before. Um, Would you be able to give me any advice in relation to that? Um, but other than that, um, are the what how we're um, tr attempting how I'm attempting to teach people about Linux and get them, uh, especially new users, is uh, now this is not meant to be a plug for our, our meetup, but that's generally what uh, one way how that manifests is 
a regular meetup of anyone who's curious can kind of come along for a coffee or whatever and just ask questions and that is primarily my way of introducing people to linux i again as you guys are saying i'm not the kind of person who's going to to force a conversation in relation to that i just lead by example um i have it on my laptop i have it on my desktop if i'm out and about in the coffee shop and people see me using it and say oh that's that's weird i've that doesn't look like windows or that doesn't look like mac what are you using uh, i would have no problem um spending 10 or 15 minutes explaining uh, um, that uh, what linux is and the fact that it's a different kind of operating system um if people are curious but other than that i'm not going to go up to people in coffee shops and say you with that shiny mac logo you shouldn't be using that operating system <laughs> uh yeah definitely not an aggressive approach yeah um like it, it's a much easier sell these days isn't it because um i remember like 10 years ago you mentioned wireless cards that brought back some some nightmares um like wireless was an absolute fucker to get working um basically anything that that wasn't the like the, the motherboard like it was just so like it was just such an uphill struggle for so many different things but now we don't have that problem i mean in the last i'd say best part of the last 10 years uh it's become so much easier to use and ev so many more things work out of the box so it's actually a very it's actually a totally viable option to use as your your daily driver now um like all i know all three of us use linux on a daily basis on all our computers so you know um gaming videos entertainment all that sexy stuff like you can do all that stuff on linux now so it's you know there, there's no more argument there like oh you can't do x y and z because you can kind of do everything on it now I think yeah, as you said, it's it's become viable option for many for many professions. Uh, Linux is basically one of, if not not just one of the viable options, but sometimes the best one. Like if you are any anything technical with development or operations or something like that, uh, definitely Linux is to be considered there on the desktop, which is something you wouldn't believe, as you said, ten years ago. But I think it's important also for us to acknowledge and understand that Linux is shit for some things, just like Windows is shit and Mac is shit for something, like you wouldn't game on a Mac and you probably don't want to uh, spend too much time in the in PowerShell unless you are really enthusiastic about it. Then, you know, there are things like video editing that uh, on Linux doesn't work very well. And if I, as far as I know, I don't know, I'm not an editor, so I only hear it hear people saying it so if i were you know if if uh, there's another part of that non-aggressive approach would be for me to acknowledge that linux might not be the best option for everybody like if you you know if you want to edit 4k video then you probably should use a mac i think yeah good point um yeah the video editing thing is uh, like for me the big bugbear is in linux these days and if someone asked me I'm a video editor or I'm an audio engineer. Don't use it. Um, like that's, that's kind of the only red line for me. Um, there may, there's probably others, but, but yeah, they're, they're, yeah, you're definitely right. Like there's definitely certain people who, who, who would find it useful and other people who, who just wouldn't. Um, that's just kind of the simple fact. Just from a general consumer of the general, um, YouTube, um, tech field would be anyone who kind of makes any kind of uh tech communication videos such as uh Linus sebastian and the um in the Linus media group and so on and so forth i noticed particularly over the last uh five years he seems to be making more and more linux related videos and he is by no way a, a linux um evangelist um at all uh, I'd say that he would actually shy away from that um, and it started off maybe one video every two to three years to say oh th th this is a curiosity I'm going to check it out and maybe for for his standard um, and in some respects I would agree with him maybe it wasn't hitting the mark at that level back then but he I think he created a, um, a new video where it was literally um 
two guys playing like they were having a conversation. One guy was the kind of uh, elder, experienced, um, well, not elder in terms of age, but more experienced Linux person who is kind of uh, answering all the questions, all the concerns of the other guy. And the other guy was like, hmm, so you can game on Linux? Um, how do you do that? And what are the options? And the other guy's like, oh, well, there's Ubuntu, there's uh, Manjaro, and there's also um, Steam with, with Proton and, and Steam Play, and this is how you install it. And th- So the very fact that uh, Linus Media Group was were able to, or thought that there's a demand for such a video um i think is only a good thing i mean as i said they are they will show the content that is the demand um if if the 60 to 70 percent of the of the computer users out there were were using the mac operating system they will be showing mac content they're showing the, what the content that the demand is so the fact that they're more and more uh, um, occasionally you'll see a Linux video pop up, particularly in relation to gaming, I think is quite telling, which uh, is encouraging from, from my point of view. Yeah, the, the yeah, the, the, that's interesting, the whole, um, the whole Linus Tech Tips thing uh, that you mentioned, because like, he's like all in <clears throat> on like standard Windows gaming rigs, all that kind of shite. But that said, I think he's actually really into it like i think and it's people like him like those influencers as you call them um that are really going to make the difference because like like he's very excited about it like any linux video he does he's very positive about it and i know linus isn't everyone's cup of tea but you know i i like him i i think he's good at what he does and i think he's very passionate about what he does you know he might be a bit whiny and annoying but like (laughs) but like i can get past that but like um but yeah, like every Linux video I've seen him do, he's super positive about it. Like when the 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 announcement came out about um, Proton on Steam, he 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 was celebrating. He thought it was fantastic. Um, I think he just loves computers and gaming on computer and using computers. And I don't really think there there's certain people who might just use Windows because it's the de facto, you know, or the default. Um, but that's only because all the games are on Windows, and that's what they want to talk about. So I think if there was an alternative, if, if, if all these dudes like suddenly were given like this amazing Ferrari version of like Linux that is, is rocking every single game you could play, then they would probably, they, they, and if it was better, they would probably switch because they just, they don't give a shit about the operating system. They just want to, they just want to fuck around with the hardware. They just want to play games. They want to code. Like they don't really mind what's underneath. Um, Mike. Uh, any final thoughts on this? Well, I we we kind of went through most of the kind of practical users, uh, as many people would say. Uh, no, I'm missing a word. Anyway, um, pragmatic, which you know, it's a uh, funny word. But there are people for whom Linux might be a choice, not because it's technically better or different, but because they uh like the idea that uh it's free as in freedom and because it's uh not technically possible for one company to own it all or for one government to uh control it completely so uh, i think another inroad into humanity for linux would be for pe and it is already happening for people who uh, need something that's not, you know, produced by uh, by one company only, so that shareholders can uh, fill their pockets. Uh, something that's made for people, not necessarily just for profit. So, uh, I guess I can see that as long as Linux keeps emphasis on privacy, security, and as long as we have people like or organizations like Mozilla, for example, who uh, are massively into that. And as long as there is this part of Linux, then it's not just gamers and developers who might see use of it, but also journalists, uh, you know, people who need uh, people who need privacy because uh, not having it could cost them their life. Uh, that kind of that kind of thing. 
Um, one thing that I would say is I could see is a very good use case for um, the Linux and de desktop operating system and um, it, it's been attempted but it, I don't think it's been attempted in a very good way um, in the past is um, such things as the uh, governments and civil servants and things like that just rolling out um, it, it is part of their infrastructure. Uh, I see it as it could be a massive cost saving. I mean, um, I believe it was Munich attempted to do it, but they did it in such a bad way as in they they decided, well, our internal IT team are going to develop our own Linux uh, distribution and we're going to have to maintain it with all their updates and everything. No, that that's definitely not the uh, the correct model to do. I, uh, you, you probably should go to the likes of Canonical or Red Hat or uh, SUSE Linux or uh, Zorn, I believe, or, or try to make inroads into that as well of these are the people who make the operating uh, operating system and they provide it for free uh, but the what but what they do is they for uh, consultation enterprise consultation and to have enterprise support uh, and and so on um <clears throat> It's definitely the way forward and what is something that I wish more governments around the world would do uh, or uh, more cities around the world would do, uh, whatever the case may be, of saying we're going to roll this out uh, and we're also going to roll out things like LibreOffice as our office suite, just more open standards essentially rather than being locked into the whims of Microsoft. Okay, on that note, I think we're going to uh, start wrapping things up. Um, so uh, just to get it out of, out of the way, uh, you can support us if you so wish. You can buy us a coffee or a beer or whatever you fancy buying us. Um, well, you can give us money and we can decide what to buy with it. <laughs> so uh, that you can do that at linuxlads.com slash support. So uh, that'd be that'd be kindly, kindly appreciated. If you feel like it, no, no pressure, but you know, we are very poor and we would like some money, <laughs> but, um, Marco, uh, we have to give a special shout out to Marco who, who, who sent some love our way. So, uh, much, much appreciated. Um, do people say much twice? I don't know. Um, Marco. Yeah. Great guy. Terrific. Great guy. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, um, you can get us on Telegram. So we have short links to everything. We have linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. We've got uh, linuxlads.com forward slash Twitter. We have Facebook. I don't know what the URL is. I think it's forward slash Facebook as well. Um, and uh, Mastodon, linuxlads.com forward slash Mastodon. You can also get us on show at linuxlads.com if you want to uh, send us something spammy and, you know, tear us a new one because we're shit um and if you want to meet us in real life uh you can look up the uh, dublin linux user or the oh we changed the name didn't we uh the dublin linux community at dublinlinux.org and we're also on meetup if you want to come to dublin and poke us in the eye or something um so with that i think we will wrap it up um uh it's been nice talking to you guys like we do every two weeks um i have been shane i've been connor and I have been fake news, Mike. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Bye. Bye.